Alright, let's continue with the modeling. So I'm going to just a little bit scale up, but not with the scale tool, but by selecting those vertices and just bring them a little bit up. Once I'm done, then I'm going to switch to my box to create the handle. But what I'm going to do is, rather than creating on the grid, I'm going to turn on auto grid. So it makes me to create the model directly onto any any geometry you, that you have and that and directly you can create the model onto the geometry and again it's part of the pre-planning by selecting those vertices and just squeeze them a little bit so side by side I'm also watching the reference as well I highly recommend it always keep your reference nearby and uh, just Trying to set up the center of the grid, but since I already changed the vertices of my speaker, so it's not on the center of the grid now. So just eyeballing it right now. And again, I'm bringing those vertices onto the corners so that I can create the supporting loops. So what I'm going to do the smooth, it will be created as a bevel. Just bringing out a bevel over here, with the bevel tool. And once I'm done, I'm gonna check with the use nubs of these. It's a good habit to keep checking with the use nubs D sub D, sorry. So just bring out the edges again, adding some supporting loops. And I'm trying to do some ring over here. Now the shortcut key for the ring is Alt R that you can try. Again, using the use knobs to check the smoothing. Adding the connects. Always try to keep track on your polygons. So on the left side, as you can see, I already open up my poly counts. It shows me on how many polygon geometry I do have on this model. You don't want to go super high poly with this model. So I'm using use nub sub D and that's the pow uh, powerful thing about the use nub C that you can edit. Now with the turbo smooth, you can't do the editing, but using the new uh, nub sub D allows you to directly uh, edit onto the mesh and you can see the output directly. So this technique, which I'm doing it right now, it's called hovering geometry and it looks like uh, they are not separate, but they are more like a combined version of this. So now I'm adding the uh, handle of this. And again, pre-planning of the geometry, adding the sub T. And deleting the half because I'm going to do the mirror. Once I'm confirmed, it's gonna select those vertices and just bring them up a little bit. Just giving a nice shape over here. The good idea is uh, for the modeling is always go by step by step. I mean to say every vertex by vertex. You don't have to go directly select all those vertices and bring them up. Selecting those four faces and just doing a extrude over here and then just rotating on the 90 degree angle and The rotation option I uh, turn it on by right-clicking over there and giving a degree of 90 a little bit hard to select those Rotation sometimes it happens Just giving an angle over here and then bringing up down now for this I'm going to do a chamfer and that will bring one edge into two and allows you me to make that curve that I'm looking for that curve shape over there however I can't do this the same with the nubs uh, creating a line tool and creating that shape but 
since I have uh, the control over here how many polygons I can do so I that's why I chose this way so adding some swift loop over there and again playing with the shape and just bring in the little bit down a little bit closer to the surface make sure my this vertices going to be center on the vertices oh sorry center of the grid Again, adding a swift loop just giving that curve over there and doing a mirror the mirror modifier allows you to directly do a mirror of the object onto the opposite direction now there are basically some different different modifiers like mirror and symmetry the mirror is more like an instant that you do the modeling on the right hand side and the left hand side is going to be the uh, instead that whatever you do on the right hand side it's going to be the same on the left hand side but on the symmetry it's more like a baked version you directly apply the symmetry and it's going to be merge uh, vertices onto the center and there's nothing going to be something like a mirror version that what you do on the left hand side is going to be happen on the right hand side so once I got the shape again applying the used nub subdivision just checking the proportion as well it's really important check the proportion side by side as well because a lot of students do this mistake that they create the model but sometimes the handle is way too big sometimes the speaker is too big so always keep checking your proportion and the best part is that checking your proportion that you can do is by going to the prospective view and check the reference and check the model checking simultaneously allows you to gives you the nice proportion and again I'm selecting those vertices and make them straight and since I didn't apply the mirror over here so I have to do it manually on the both side and it's okay sometimes you have to do the part is called asymmetry where you uh, make the changes on the one hand side but on the other a little bit different so it's natural and keep that uh, you know natural thing onto your model so it looks more uh, realistic once I got this shape I'm going to apply the mirror again and there you have it the turbo smooth you can see how it looks nice and sharp again setting my pivot for the rigging purposes and if I rotate you can see how I can change the handle the shape and changing to local allows you to change your gimbal and you can play with these I would recommend you to play with your uh, gimbals once you got that then we're going to select the vertices and make them make sure uh, you keep it as a group uh, proper naming of the model it's necessary and it's a good habit gonna set my pivot to the center once we set the group obviously your pivots goes to the center of the group but right now I'm doing just for the modeling purposes cause what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of the speaker as well now I'm adding some buttons um, for the uh, speaker and I start with the box and just make sure it doesn't penetrate with the speaker it's more like a overlapping of the geometry just gonna bring those vertices onto the corner again the same techniques that I'm applying over here that uh, just bring those edges into the corner but upper vertices I'm going to make that shape the rounded shape so that I can add those buttons over here Again, I'm doing the pre-planning over here and again doing the chamfered to bring one edge to the two. This is actually a nice technique to bring one edge to two and that allows you to add more segments without even losing the shape of the geometry. And over here I'm going to select those three vertices and just bring them up just to get a nice cut onto the corner because it's onto the reference as well 
So I'm going to do the same over here. Adding a swift loop for the supporting and on the mid section as well. Just make them straight, keeping a nice clean topology. And again, selecting those two edges and I bring them as a vertices. How I did that is by selecting those edges and then holding down control and clicking on those vertices. That allows me to convert edges into uh, vertices selection. Now I already deleted the middle of the section that allows you to I mean, just for speaker purposes, it's uh, make the sounds clear. So always keep the logic in behind. Don't want to go too much fantasy, especially obviously in the product based modeling. You want to stick with the design, but also make sure there is a logic behind that. So I'm trying to fill the gap, but it's not filling it properly. So probably I'm going to select by selecting those two edges and go by the bridge and keep going with that with the bridge tool selecting all those edges and again converting into the vertices selection just gonna weld onto the corner of the vertices always check your vertices sometimes they are not merged together so you want to make sure they are properly merged and you can do this with the weld too I'm gonna select those two vertices and just give them a nice shape adding some swift loop again some supporting loop to the corner of the edges Sorry about that, that was my clock. Now, uh, before I'm adding the loops, I wanna make sure that I will also keep it uh, low poly as much as possible. So when I'm in the modeling stage, I try to keep my mesh as low as much as possible. Again, keep checking with the turbo smooth looks nice but in this area it doesn't look good and this happens when you're adding supporting loops over there and it's all about trial and error and you need to fix those errors so again I'm using the technique of using use NURB subdivisions and now it looks fine to me okay keep going forward again applying the same material gonna open my group and just increasing the value of those divisions cause a little bit I see jaggedness over there so that's why I applied the double smooth over here since we are doing the high poly modeling, so we don't need to worry about that too much about the polygons, but uh, you want to stick with the not maximum, just stick with the low as much as possible. Just don't go crazy with this polygons count. And just apply the cylinder. I just created a cylinder and just going to create the cap segments over here. And again, with the pre-planning which is necessary and if you have noticed that I always stick with the lowest subdivisions something like 12 side maybe 12 um, 16 and 18 and 22 these are the most lowest subdivisions and what I'm looking over here right now is the center line once I'm finalized that, I'm going to convert to editable poly. I'm gonna select those faces onto the center. 
and just holding down shift I just do it and did the extrude over here just bringing out and giving a nice shape again selecting those edges by double clicking over there we do a chamfered chamfered is a great tool too using edges especially edges and vertices and what I'm doing is selecting those edges and maybe do a chamfered one more time so what I'm doing over here is creating four buttons over here and in between there is a little bit gap and I'm trying to create those gaps over here adding extrude and by changing the algorithm or you can say uh, calculation I believe and just selecting those edges do a chamfer again creating the selecting those faces and creating a gap in between now I'm holding on shift to select the loop and deleting those faces and I guess we can select these faces and delete them as well just do the isolation over here by hitting alt Q selecting those back faces which not going to be visible so I can delete them and by selecting this face just hitting grow it will grow my selection again trying to make them separate and I just changed my mind and just selecting those faces and just deleting them right now So don't be slave with the modeling. Try to go with the experiments. Keep doing experiments what you li uh, like the most. And it's a good habit and it's actually a good practice for you as well. So I did have some issues over here as you can see the clipping issue. So I'm going to turn on the viewport clipping and just turn this up. And this allows me to whatever the faces are nearby they are cutting in the half. So make sure your view Cli uh, clipping is turned on so you can see the nearby faces as well and again want to make sure that everything stays in quad and nice clean geometry using, using the well tool didn't work that well so I'm going to try with the target well. So, I'm gonna se select those faces again, applying the target well over here and over here as well. And I have uh, this free extra vertex which I deleted by backspace. If you want to delete the edge, just hit control backspace. If you want to delete just vertex, just hit backspace. Don't do the delete, that will delete the face as well. And again hitting backspace again doing the target weld over here and again the target weld have to do go with the little bit manual but that's fine that gives me much control let's select those faces and I think I will go with the detach that would be my first button and if you notice my pivot is onto the center of the center point or uh, let's say the center button is that what I was looking for it gonna select those edges and just hold it on shift and just bring them out and do a weld there we go and just to check I'm going to rotate them into 
99 degree do a copy of them and I was just checking because as I said when you're doing the experiment keep checking just bring them a little bit offset so that we can create some little bit gap in between do a connect over here maybe two and just light them onto the corner so when I'm going to shoot it it's going to be sorry about the smooth I'm going to do some adding some uh, supporting loop over there can bring it out and doing a belt and going in isolation mode the isolation is great tool that allows you to perfectly see what's going on to your perfect geometry once we got this and again do a, again quick copy of them in 9090 degree and the best part is that all are in instance so I'm gonna make sure it's in its instance so if I make one change the other will be changed as well so uh, they are now connected to each other adjusting my center button for this again I'm doing the turbo smooth over here going to vertices and what I did is turn on show end result which allows me to whatever modifier is onto the upper layer I can see the results as well once I got this kind of play with the swift loop more a little bit okay, adding some more loops into it not just happy with the shape maybe just make some rounded it over there select those edges and going to switch to constrain so constrain is more like where you slide the edge and it's going to be constrained onto the uh, onto the topology it won't change the shape but it will change the topology Change the color of my use nub sub D allows me to w see exactly what's going on. So I just change the color. What is going to be the my selection is going to be the red. Rest is going to be the blue. So now sub D is more like a cage that allows me to change the topology. The cage is the low poly, and the inside is the subdivision version. allowing me to creating nice scripts edge the best part is it's in in stance so that's why I can see the result in all four three buttons and side by side I already applied the material as you can see the specularity with the specularity I can see the I or I can say the define I can see the definition of the shape over here switching my turbo smooth again and I think I will go with this one looks fine to me gonna add a cylinder so I can show there's a connection in between the speaker and the buttons and this part doesn't need to be high poly but of course if it's going to be visible I'm going to add the turbo smooth again selecting those back faces it's not going to be visible so it's not necessary it's going to be it has to be there 
gonna select those edge and in this scenario if you notice the cylinder from the middle is the triangle lighted and that is fine you can keep the triangles and quads and quads as necessary not the end gons which is more like a five faces and in here as you can see it's more like a five sided faces but wanna get, wanna keep it as uh, four sided so as you can see it looks nice and clear and it's look pretty good now now we can go further with the next tutorial